All right, in this video, we're just going to really just get a little bit more practice with the geometric probability, do some problems that are a little bit more challenging. And so this first problem, it says the figure shown is a rectangle. If a point is chosen at random, what is the probability that it will fall in the shaded region? And so if we start off by looking at this, we know that the probability of it landing in the triangle is going to be the area of our desired outcome, which is the area of that triangle, over the total area, which would be the area of the rectangle. So what we're going to have is we have a couple little just kind of smaller, um, I guess you'd call them sub, sub problems. So if we were to do area of the rectangle, I think that's the easy part because that's just length times width. You got your length of 10 and your width of 5. So that would just be 10 times 5, which would be 50. And I want to be good with my units, so let's go ahead and say square feet. But then area of the triangle, that's going to be a little bit trickier because that's going to be base times height divided by 2. But our issue with doing base times height divided by 2 is that we don't know the base, okay? As I'm looking at this, we just don't, we don't know what the bottom of that is. And so what I hope you're identifying, I hope you're thinking about this shape critically and thinking about what we do know about it. And what we do know is since it says that we're dealing with a rectangle, we know that this is a right angle, so it's a right triangle. And then we've got a 30 degree angle right here. So not that you necessarily need it for this problem, but you could conclude that that angle up there would be 60 because we know the interior angles of the triangle are going to add up to 180. And then you could use trig to find our base of the triangle right here, but I would recommend you just use special right triangles. And so I'm not going to go into all the ins and outs of special right triangles for this because that's outside of the scope of this video. But what we know is if, if the leg that's opposite the 30 degree angle is 5, then the, the other leg, the leg opposite the 60 degree angle, would have a measure of 5 roots of 3. So as we come up here, we have our base, which is 5 roots of 3 times our height, which is 5, all over 2. If I wanted to, to simplify that and get an exact representation, I'd do 5 times 5 and I'd get 25 roots of 3 over 2, which um, you can go ahead and just punch that in the calculator. That's going to become um, roughly, let me see in my notes over here, that's going to become roughly 21.65 square feet. And so if I come back down here to what we're dealing with, we know that the area shaded that we want is 21.65. And then we have that the, the, the full area of the rectangle we've already established was our 50. So if I were to punch all that into the calculator, you're, you're going to get 0.433, which is roughly 43%. So if you were to randomly pick a point in this figure, there is a 43% chance that it would land in this shaded region. All right, our next problem, the figure shown is a rectangle. If a point is chosen at random, what is the probability that it will fall in the shaded region? Now we've got a shaded region that, that I think is a little bit more tricky and a little bit more complicated. And so what we want is we want basically our shaded area divided by our total area. So if I wanted to find the total area, I think that the area um, total or the area of the rectangle is going to be easy again. That's just going to be length times width, which would be 20 times 10 or 200. And they don't really give us units here, so let's just call them units squared. Now, calculating the area of this shaded region is what I think can be really tricky and really difficult. So, so let, I think it might help us to think of it a little bit differently. What if I were to shade in all of this other space right here? Okay, so let me kind of shade in all this extra space. Think about what you would do if, if I said, I want you to find the area of the um, of all the shaded region. So for that, you'd say, okay, the area of the shaded region is going to be the area of the rectangle. Area of the rectangle. I'll use a little subscript for the rectangle. And then I'm going to subtract two times the area of the circle. And, and if I took the area of the rectangle and subtracted two times the area of these circles, we have two circles that are the same, that would give you your shaded area. But you got to keep in mind, we don't want the whole shaded area. It looks like we really just want half 
of the shaded area. So I'd come back over here and I'd just take this whole formula and do a big old divided by two. So what we do if we were doing this is we'd say the area of the rectangle is 200. Then we're gonna subtract two times the area of the circle, which the circle is gonna be pi r squared. And hopefully you're thinking about the radius of this circle. And what we see right here is that this width, as we call it, of the rectangle would be the same as the diameter of our circle. So if the diameter of the circle is 10, then that means 5 would be the radius of the circle. And then we are, um, as I mentioned, all divided by 2. So once we're to this point, I, this is just calculator button pushes, 200 minus 2 times the area of the circle divided by 2. That's going to give us our shaded area. And your shaded area there is going to be roughly 21.46 square feet. So now I'm coming down here to our problem. We said the area of our desired outcomes or the area of our successes is roughly 21.46 and then our full area is 200. Well, if I, if I do all the button pushes in my calculator on that, you're gonna get roughly 0.11 or 11%. So the, the probability idea isn't super in-depth here, but what's in-depth is how difficult it is to find the area of our shaded region. So you might have to be a little bit creative to do that. You may have actually uh, thought of it differently than I did here, but as long as you end up with roughly 21.46, you're good to go. What is the probability that a randomly selected point will fall in the shaded region? You've got this shaded region, and then you've got an overall triangle. So if we were to randomly pick a point, what are the chances it would fall in that shaded region? And so um, what we know is that we can use our kind of our same formula and same structure. We got uh, the probability of landing in the shaded region is the area of our desired outcomes, which is the area of the shaded triangle, divided by the total area, which is the area of the big triangle. So we got a few little uh, sub-math problems here to find the area of this triangle and then define the area of the overall triangle. So uh, for, for really for both triangles, it's base times height divided by two, but obviously we have different bases. The base of the shaded triangle is this. The base of our big triangle is the full seven, but it does look like they both have the same height. So what we gotta calculate is we gotta calculate the base of the little triangle, and we gotta calculate the height, which will function as the height for both triangles. And so um, hopefully you're recognizing that if that is a right angle right there, then, then this is a right angle. So we are dealing with a right triangle with which we have one of our angles. And so within there, I hope you're saying, hey, let's do some trig. And to do some trig, you, to, to find why, you could say the sine of a 55 degree angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. And then from there, if you wanted to solve, it'd be pretty simple to solve. You just multiply by three on each side and three times the sine of 55 degrees is gonna give you that Y coordinate. Make sure you are in degrees when you punch that into your calculator. And when you do, you should get that that Y value is roughly, and I'm rounding here, 2.46. And now let's move over and let's talk about the, the X value. If you were able to get the Y value, you're probably able to get the X value, but um, right now, if we had that 55 degree angle, we're trying to relate the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. So, that's gonna be cosine, so we're gonna say the cosine of a 55 degree angle is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm just gonna multiply each side of that equation by three, just like we did for sine, and we have three times the cosine of 55 degrees equals x, and so whenever I punch all that into the calculator, we're gonna get that the x value, the base of our shaded triangle is roughly 1.72. Now we have all the math we need to do these two little math problems right here. We know that uh, we, we can do the shaded triangle first. We, we have that our base is 1.72. We have that our height is 2.46. And then we are dividing by two. And so once I put all that into my calculator, we're gonna get 2.1156. And then I guess, oh, what are we? Looks like we're in terms of feet. So that means that triangle has an area of a little over two feet. And then if I come here, uh, we're doing base times height divided by two again, but now we're talking about the big triangle. So our base is now actually a seven, okay? So we're gonna do seven times two, uh, let me see, times 2.46, and then we're going to divide that by two. 
And if I put that in the calculator, we are going to get 8.61. So now we're just ready to, to come over to our big, I guess you could call it the master formula over here. But the area of a success is 2.1156. The area total or of the big triangle is 8.61. And once you put do your last couple of button pushes, you get roughly 0.25 or 25%. You got If you're picking a random point in here, there's a 25% chance it's going to be in that shaded region. Now, I, I really like this problem. This is, uh, to me, an interesting application of geometric mean. And so what we're doing here is, uh, actually, let me read the problem first. It says that a, a bus stop arrives at a particular or a bus arrives at a particular bus stop every 20 minutes. If you were to show up at the bus stop at a random time, what is the probability that you would be waiting for, you know, our first question is four minutes or less, somewhere from eight to 15 minutes, or 18 minutes or more. And so what we can do is we can represent our waiting time with a number line. And in order to make it make sense, I, I kind of use the negative side of the number line, and, and I hope this uh, gives the problem a little more meaning to you. But let's, let's let zero represent when the bus is gonna show up. So if you showed up here, that means you showed up 16 minutes before the bus comes. If you showed up here, that means you showed up 19 minutes before the bus comes. If you showed up here, that means you showed up five minutes before the bus comes. And so what we're doing is we're going to uh, find the probability that we show up and that we're gonna be waiting four minutes or less. Well, so I could represent this by saying the probability that we're waiting for, um, let me just, I'll just write it out, four or less. You'll see it written like that in probability notation sometimes. But that's going to be the length of the desired segment, or the length of what we consider a success, so length of desired segment, over the total length, okay, which is kind of like our total number of outcomes. Well, in this case, let's figure out what it looks like on the number line to be waiting for four minutes or less. Well, if you're waiting for four minutes or less and the bus shows up here, that means you are showing up somewhere in this little space right here. Oops, I tried to erase that. Somewhere in this little space right here. So the, that means that the line segment that represents when you're showing up has a length of four, okay? And then the total length, which is our total number of outcomes, is represented by this entire line segment, which has a length of 20, okay? Not negative 20, negative 20 is a location, but the actual length of it is 20. And if we do that, we have four over 20, which is 20%. There's a 20% chance that when you get there, you'll be waiting for four minutes or less. Now, let's do the next one. The next one says, um, we want to know the probability that we are waiting somewhere between eight and 15 minutes. So I would say pause the video, try these next two on your own and then hit play whenever you're ready. But um, the probability, I'm just gonna write out waiting between eight and 15. And that's going to be equal to the length of the desired segment over our total length. And so in this case, the length of our desired segment, let's see if we're waiting for, if we show up we're waiting for 15 minutes, we're showing up there. And if we come this way and then the minimum we're waiting is eight minutes, that means that there's our desired segment. It looks like our desired segment has a length of seven minutes. And then out of all the places, out of all the potential times we could show up, the, the total number of outcomes or the total length is 20. So if you simplify that, you are going to see there's a 35% chance that we're waiting somewhere from 8 to 15 minutes. Now let's do our last question. The last question says, what's the probability that you're going to be waiting for 8 minutes or, or excuse me, for 18 minutes or more? So probability of 18 or more minutes. Well, for that, you're going to do the length of the desired segment over the total length. And so if we're waiting for 18 minutes or more, that means we're waiting right here. It means we're showing up pretty much right after the bus leaves um, and then all the way up to 18 minutes. So that, that's only two minutes represented by two units on this number line. So the length of our desired segment is two. The total length is still 20 because we could still show up at any time. And so that would be um, 0.10 or a 10% chance. Um, not to get too much into the weeds on this, but with a problem like this is what we call continuous data. Time is, is continuous here. It doesn't really matter if you say in between 8 and 15 or if you're inclusive of 8 and 15. I know sometimes we do inequalities. We have open circles and closed circles. 
with a problem like this, the, the probability difference between having negative 14.9999999 and negative 15, that difference is negligible, so it doesn't actually change the outcome of our probability. So don't get bogged down on uh, open circles or closed circles in a situation like this, but, but go back to your basics with probability, the length of your desired segment over the total length.